I, uh, I think we're good to get started. All right. Sounds great. Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining the sneak peek preview of the newly named Dallas Harris Elementary School. My name is Katie Swain, and I have been a Barber Valley resident for about six and a half years now. Um, when I heard of the Dallas Harris School coming to fruition, I volunteered to represent the community during the planning charrette meetings. So that's who I am. Um, I also learned what a valuable organization the uh, BVNA is with having a voice in the community. So I joined that board as well. Um, today, we will be hearing from different team members that have been working very hard on the details of the Dallas Harris School. And we can't wait to show you all that we have. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Brian Walker, the Timberline Area Director with the Boise School District. Thank you, Katie. Um, I just wanna say uh, welcome and good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we are super excited to show the progress that we are making uh, with the design uh, of Dallas Harris uh, Elementary School. Uh, I gotta get used to saying that now. Uh, last night, a little tidbit of information, last night at our board meeting, uh, we approved, uh, our board approved the name of the new elementary school and it will be called Dallas Harris uh, Elementary. Um, when you go back to the beginning of this bond project, uh, we, uh, at the beginning, the uh, back in 2017, when we passed this uh, in the bond, uh, we have an MOU uh, with uh, the Harris family and the Harris partnership. Uh, where in that MOU, I explained last night at the board meeting, uh, one of the things that was agreed upon was to name the school after uh, a Harris uh, family member, and that family member is Dallas Harris. And so we are super excited uh, with that as we move forward. And before we get into the presentation uh, from the architects uh, that have been working on this, I wanted to share a little bit of background uh, with where we've been and where we're headed with this project. So give me a moment, I'm gonna share my screen. So, hold on a sec, gotta move stuff around on my screen. There we go. Um, so just a little bit of background. Uh, when this uh, was determined that uh, we were gonna have a new school out in the Barber Valley, uh, the Boise School District worked with the Harris Partnership uh, and the Harris family uh, graciously donated uh, land to the school district to build this elementary school. Uh, original, the original donation was 2.3 acres in 2017. And then through this Shrep process, uh, one of the things that we had to work through was the green space. And originally uh, the village green was gonna be used as a green space for the school. But as we worked through this in the charrette, um, what we found was there were too many safety concerns. And I would like to give credit to uh, Katie along with the other patrons that we had participating in that charrette. Uh, for bringing out some of the safety features and things that we need to be thinking about. And um, where we ended up in 2020 uh, in that process, uh, right before the pandemic hit, um, uh, the Harris family graciously agreed to donate an additional 0.7 acres, which allows us to put the entire school on one site along with the green space and then it'll move the parking garage across the street to the east of the school site. And you'll see that when the architects uh, present uh, the design. Um, some facts about the school, uh, school size, it's, uh, we're building it uh, for approximately 500 students. Um, we have had different timelines as far as when the school was gonna open. If you recall, original, originally our timeline was the fall of 2022. And that was based on infrastructure in Harris Ranch getting put into place. Uh, uh, you know, with that's how we set that original timeline. We would have loved to have done it earlier in the bond, uh, er, earlier years of the bond, but that was a piece we were waiting on was infrastructure. Then uh, when the pandemic hit, 
uh, that forced us to hit the pause button um, because there was financial uncertainty of what was to come uh, with all the unknowns of the pandemic. And um, one thing we did commit to do um, as we move forward, even though we paused and uh, we had pushed back to the fall of 2024 of opening the school, um, one of the things we made sure we did was we continued in our design efforts. And because we did that and things, now that the dust has settled somewhat and we have a better sense of where we're at financially, um, we have been able to move that opening of the school back, uh, move it forward to the fall of 2023, which we're super excited about. And I hope and I know uh, community members are anxiously uh, awaiting for that school to be opened. Um, and then the next two bullets there, I, I already mentioned uh, with the naming uh, that we approved that last night and the name will be Dallas Harris Elementary School. And then next slide, hold on here. It's not letting me, let me stop share. Give me a moment. My computer froze up. There we go. And there, sorry about that. Um, so next steps in this project for us, um, we're going to, we are still in design development, uh, with our architects and, uh, we will continue to proceed with that. One of the things that we're going to be addressing in the upcoming school year is boundaries. And we plan to have those finalized by the spring of 2022. Uh, one thing I'll point out about boundaries is we will communicate to the public and community members in East Boise when we're ready to begin that process. Uh, and we do have uh, in that process, there will be opportunity for public comment um, where community members uh, can offer comment. And uh, we will also include some community members, part of our uh, process that we have, we will also include some uh, committee, mem or community members in our committee work as we prepare to move down that road. But that, that will, you don't have to worry about when that's gonna happen. We will communicate that to the public when we are ready to begin that process. And then other things that we still have ahead of us is uh, when design development is finished, uh, we will submit uh, to the Harris Ranch Board for approval. Uh, that's still yet to be determined. Our hope is it'll be somewhere in the fall. And then we will be submitting to Boise Planning and Zoning for approval uh, also sometime during the fall. Our goal is to begin construction on this uh, school in the late spring of 2022. And uh, another question that uh, we get from uh, uh, community members is who's going to be the principal and when are you going to do your staffing? And that's still yet to be determined, but that process will unfold as we move forward also. And we will communicate that as we go. And the most important thing, mascot and colors of the school. Uh, our goal uh, is to have a principal in place to lead that process uh, when we move forward uh, down the road. And so that will be at a later date once a principal is in place and uh, still yet to be determined. So that's some basic uh, background information uh, that I just wanted to share with everyone tonight. Uh, I'm sure uh, there will be more questions uh, through this uh, presentation that people have. Uh, and so I'd like uh, to turn it over to Ryan Hill uh, uh, from the Boise School District. Uh, and he will share how uh, patrons can submit comments and uh, questions. Great. Um, thanks a lot, Brian. I really appreciate it. So um, for folks who are watching this uh, via the district's YouTube channel, the page that you uh, landed on to get here, which is our Dallas, <clears throat> excuse me, our uh, Dallas Harris Elementary School bond page will actually be the place going forward where we collect all of the information regarding the project, um, including uh, a copy of today's presentation that the architects will walk us through, the copy of the presentation that Brian Walker just walked us through, as well as there will be um, toward the end of this presentation today, 
um, a link to a Google form where you can submit questions. And we are taking questions, I believe, through, um, is it the 16th, Brian? Do you remember? Yes, it is the 16th. And what we'll do is we'll go through the questions and we will come up, we'll work with the architects and, and um, with the other stakeholders to answer any of those questions. And then we will post the responses in uh, the form of an FAQ back on that web page. So I'd, if you're interested in this project, I would bookmark that page and, and you know, check back there for um, updates. Also, um, probably within a couple of hours or certainly by tomorrow morning, I'll have a link to the recording of this entire YouTube presentation if you want to go back through and, and listen to the architects in their own words describe the awesomeness that is the Dallas Hell Harris Elementary School. So, um, like I said, just keep checking back with the web page that you found the YouTube link on and there'll be plenty of information. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ryan. And so at this time, I'm going to turn it over to John Mullen uh, from CSHQA, uh, one, our, one of our lead architects on this project. And uh, he's going to introduce the architect team and they're going to walk us through the project. So, John, it's all yours. Looks good. Looks like Kelly's got right on it. Um, I'm John Mullen. I'm a principal at CSHQA. And uh, we've teamed with DLR Group uh, several times in the past. And so for this project, um, because of the nature of it, it made some sense to actually have the design expertise that already had some knowledge of the Harris Ranch um, development when they were, did the first charrettes a long time ago for the school as it was going together. So uh, I'll be uh, working here in the office in Boise with uh, Jim Matradoski and Stephanie Chimonos and John Zeal, who's actually not listed here, but is listening in, uh, working on it uh, in a team uh, effort with uh, DLR Group. DLR Group, Ariel Mailing and uh, Kelly Mabry will be conducting most of the presentation today as we walk through uh, the various drawings and documents we've put together for the uh, plans and elevations to give you guys all kind of a taste of where we're at. Uh, by no means are we concluded with our design efforts. This is really that kind of first step and hopefully you'll get enough to see out of what we are gonna have presented here. So at this point, I'll pass it on to Kelly and Kelly and um, Ariel are going to kind of do it back and forth. Great, thank you very much, John. Uh, hello, everybody. We are very excited to be here with all of you today um, because we get to talk about this fantastic elementary school that we have been working on. Um, it's been an incredible effort between two different architectural firms, um, Boise School District, and of course, uh, the community patrons that have been participating along the way. Just to give you all a little bit of context, here is the larger development uh, map of the Harris Ranch area. And we are situated close to the south end of the entire development. Um, you can see in this area, there's the blue outline here um, that circles around sites uh, SE7 and SE8. These are the lot locations of the school. And you can see there's a green square just to the south, or sorry, excuse me, just to the west of the site. That is the larger village green and public space of the larger development. And to the west and to the north of the main site, that blue square, you'll see we've got all these purple squares and those represent different types of mixed use and commercial areas along this development. So the school is situated in a really fun, very community oriented and active area of the development itself. And as we zoom into the larger site, I'm gonna pass it over to Ariel and she can talk about some of the things that are closer in the area. Ariel, I believe you're on mute. Thank you, Kelly. Um, <laughs> always bound to happen. Um, so as we zoom in on the site, you see the village green to the left. That's the area that um, Brian told us about. You see the building in the blue um, and you see that play field that's now on the site to the right of the school um, to the west, to the east, sorry. And if you look um, in the northwest corner is where the building entry is going to be. 
um, that's nicely located to the action of the of the downtown of the Harris Ranch development, very prominent, very easily visible. Um, along Haystack Road, Haystack Street on the north, we have our parent drop off. Parents will be able to drop off along that edge um, and watch their students enter through the front door or through the gate to the hard surface play for morning gathering. Buses alternately will be dropping off on the south side, um, and that allows us to have a uh, separation between buses and parents to keep safety at, uh, at the forefront. Um, students then will be able to enter either into the building on that south side or again through a gate into the morning gathering area. Um, as you can see, there's also a secure fence around the remain the rest of the site. So there's a secure site for students. Um, this, as you can see, we have three-story building, really the urban nature of this um, site, and also the fact that we wanted to be able to maintain space for student play um, resulted in a three-story option. It also is a nice solution because it allows the second and third stories to be dedicated to student learning and classrooms um, with more of the public features on the first floor. Thank you, Ariel. As Ariel noted, we have three different floors for this elementary school because of the more compact, um, more compact nature of the site. Um, and what we've started to do, as Ariel expressed earlier, is we've really looked at the separation of the layers of the building. So what we're seeing right now is the first floor. And this first floor is really going to be what we see and what we worked out with the school district and the community patrons is the more public spaces, things that could potentially allow public access um, after school hours or be used as part of the community. And so as we look at this first floor up here to the north of the site, we have the gym and the commons area with the kitchen. And then as you round to the northwest corner of the site where the main entry is, it's surrounded by the admin block, which includes reception in the main lobby. And what this has done is it has allowed some great visibility by all the admin and the staff who are going to be stationed on this first floor to see who's walking around the school for site safety and security. But it also allows for great views into some of the more circulation spaces and the more public spaces so that you can still have visibility from the community into the school, but you're not um, taking away any of the safety or security or privacy that the students need during the regular learning day. And then additionally on the first floor, as we come down to the southwest corner of the site, we have the media center or library, along with the music classrooms. And this west bar here faces that village green. So all of these spaces have opportunities for great views into that green space to have visibility to nature and just really feel like this lower portion of the building is still very protective, um, protective for student privacy, but also still has the visibility of the green spaces and the surrounding areas. And then finally on the south bar here, we've looked at placing kindergarten down on the lower floor, um, along with some of the special education programs. And we've done this because these programs really benefit from being as close to, you know, separate kindergarten play as possible, um, closer to the hard surface play, um, because kindergartners take a little bit more time to move around, as most people know. Um, so keeping them closer to some of the more public amenities that all students need to use and to also ease them into the integration of school life. And what we've done is we've placed them in facing inward towards the hard surface play um, so that they're protected from the street view and they can feel like they're more a part of the community and really get a sense of what it's like to be in school on a regular basis. And so we're going to zoom into the main entry really quickly. Um, as you're seeing, this is the northwest corner. Um, the main entry in the main lobby here really focuses on that more public, more busy, active street um, so that the front of the school has a great presence in the community. And we're looking at the exterior materials and building um, and the material patterns still. Those are currently in development, but currently we're working with a more civic palette with establishing a really great rhythm of windows and um, currently looking at brick um, to just create a civic presence with this building in the community, um, but also to really study the lower level to make sure that as you're walking by the school as a pedestrian, it feels really comfortable and inviting and it's a pleasant building to see on your daily walk throughout the community. 
as you enter into that um, entry vestibule, um, you see that we have our main learning stairs. And this is an opportunity to really have learning on display and to um, express the individuality of the school while still protecting student privacy and having students um, their, their deep learning protected from uh, distractions of the outside. So this lobby is a great place for um, families to gather, for um, potentially for teachers to do together for students. Um, and, it, and it really allows it to be a feature that expresses what the school is. Um, and then if we move along this uh, northern facade, again, we have this corridor that there's interaction between the um, sidewalk and the students. So it's really not in their core learning space. It's in their circulation um, to the gym and the commons. Um, the gym then you see there is a door between the lobby and the gym and commons area and a door um, from the sidewalk into the gym area. This allows the whole gym and commons area to be used in after hours without access to the rest of the building. There's still bathrooms um, and uh, other amenities that are required for after hours use. Now we're going to zoom over to the west side of the space of the first floor. And as you can see, we're back towards the admin block near the main entry and then the media and music center. And one of the big focuses as we touched on earlier is that these spaces in particular, they have great views onto the village green. So really this high visibility from um, the student and staff perspective of nature, uh, which is really soothing and helpful in terms of relaxing everybody throughout the school day. Um, and in order to make sure that we're still protecting student privacy, um, you can see here the media center and or library in this yes, yellow middle block has been set back from that immediate street front um, to pull back that, that core learning area so that you can still see out um, to the village green, but you feel a little bit more protected from the street front. Again, finding that nice balance between high visibility and engagement in the community, but offering students the privacy and the security they need to carry out their learning throughout the day. And then as we zoom down over to the south side of the building, this other bar, again, we've got uh, a potential for a secondary entry um, into this main bar. Um, there are doors up to the north of this area. So the media center and possibly music has the potential if desired to be used as a public amenity after hours um, and completely secure the kindergarten wing off along with the rest of the school as well. When we move up to the second and third floor, you see a very similar um, plan. And what you see all this blue is classroom learning spaces. And the gray, we have support spaces of storage or bathrooms. And then the, the blue is, uh, the purple is a, um, a feature that is a little bit unique to this school that um, came from our discussions with um, staff and community um, on what would best support learning. I'll talk about that on the next slide. So we're, what we're looking at in classrooms is really the ability for the classroom to be uh, maximally flexible into the future. Um, sometimes other schools in, uh, in the Boise School District have specialists that come in and work with students and they may do so um, in uh, spaces in the corridor or um, near the classroom. Um, we've brought those into the classroom as a small group room. This also facilitates some team teaching between a classroom because there's a pass through between one classroom and the other. And these are the kind of spaces, this is an example an image from another school on the top, um, where you might have a group of students working on a special project. You might have a specialist working um, with some students. You might have some a student taking a test that they missed um, earlier in the week because they were out sick, or it's used for a whole variety of things that allows students and teachers um, to maximize their use of the classroom and their space for learning. And as we move up to the third floor, it's a very similar floor plan dedicated completely to learning with the one exception of having an outdoor learning terrace and a project space down to the Southwest corner. This is one of the more unique features um, in the building. We've 
because we've been able to elevate all of the classrooms to the second and third level to really lift the students off the street, but still allow them to visually engage with the community. It's allotted us the opportunity to provide an outdoor learning space on the third floor. And this is really wonderful because it's something that can be shared across all of the classrooms and it can also be used as a core learning space if desired, again, touching on that flexibility that Ariel mentioned earlier. Um, and it allows everybody who's involved in the school, students, staff to teach and be engaged um, with fresh air, outdoor space um, throughout their learning day. And then again, one of the great benefits to the site and to lifting the second and third floor um, with just the classrooms up above is you've got wonderful views out to the village green and then you also have the students having visual access to the green play field on the eastern side of the site as well. And with that um, is the conclusion of our presentation. We were really excited to present this project today to work with this fabulous community and with this um, great school district to um, build this project and put this together. And um, so thank you for all of um, your time today. All right, thank you, uh, Kelly and Ariel. And thank you, John and Jim, uh, for all your efforts and for um, presenting that for us tonight. Um, that concludes our presentation. And I just wanna reiterate um, uh, that we will be sending out a link uh, for this information. Uh, of where this will be located on our website that people can access in the future. Uh, but we'll also be sending uh, information of where uh, patrons can submit uh, questions, comments that didn't get answered during this presentation. Uh, and we look forward to answering those. And uh, we will, uh, after the 16th, we'll compile all those questions and comments. And then we will, our hope is by the end of the month to send out uh, an FAQ that answers many of those questions. So thank you for joining us tonight. And lastly, I just want to thank again, all the members of our Charette team, uh, the patrons that participated, our architects, Doug Fowler and his team, uh, and then also um, uh, members of the Boise School District that helped us move along in the design process. So thank you all for your efforts and have a good evening.